Oh. Who's this? Oh, who's this? Is it Mac? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> so Mac's about four and a half months old now. He's getting quite big. I think he's around 33 pounds. Figured I'd give you guys a little, a little update on him. He's doing really good. He's getting along with uh, our other two labs, Cooper and Koto, a lot. I'm always posting pictures in uh, the Discord I have, so. <laughs> what I mentioned in one of my previous videos was that it was in the cards for me to get a bigger truck. Um, before this, I had a 2013 Tacoma, and um, since I've had it for about seven years, I figured it was about time to upgrade on top of the fact that I wanted to start getting into some of this stuff, so I did need something that could have a bit more towing power, because with the Tacoma, you could really feel this load that I'm pulling right now, which is around 5,000 pounds. So uh, it would get a little sketchy if I had to go anywhere on the highway or anywhere long trip. So since Toyota doesn't make a real three quarter ton, uh, the Tundra is only considered a half ton, I had to look at other brands and it's really between GMC, Chevy, Dodge, and Ford. Um, I'm not really a fan or I invested in any one of those brands, so I was pretty much to be convinced by any of the models via reviews or people's interests and things like that. So I kind of took a peek at all of them and ended up kind of settling on the GMC because I really like this aesthetic and honestly the features that all of them provide are pretty much the same and they're all overpriced for what they are. So um, this was a truck that I actually ended up finding a pretty good deal on. This is a 2020 GMC Sierra 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 V8 in it. It's gas, so um, it doesn't have the same amount of towing power as a diesel, but you also don't have to pay the huge premium for the diesel engine as well as the gas and the maintenance on it. And really for what I'm doing, this will tow all the way up to where you would need a CDL anyways, and I'm not gonna be going beyond that, as well as I'll use it for a lot of my daily driving and I would rather be using gas for that than diesel. This is a base model truck and it came with a couple extra features uh, such as these nicer rims and some other stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head because honestly, I really only care about the truck for you know, general transportation and towing and just like my other truck, I didn't use it for anything else besides that, didn't have any luxury features in it. So don't need them now. The only thing that it didn't come with, which every other model came with, uh, were towing mirrors, which I don't know why, but um, right now they don't make the conversion kits for these newer models yet, so I'll have to wait to get those maybe next spring when they make them. Other than that, they were offering a really good rebate on, uh, if you have a small business, you could get a thousand dollar rebate on accessories, so I got running boards, spray liner, and a tonneau cover coming in, um, so that helped out a lot on the price. And realistically, a lot of people know that look at these trucks, they can go all the way up to about $80,000. And of course, I'm not paying $80,000 for a truck that's going to do this. So I ended up getting this one for a really good deal, I think. It was uh, about $40,000 after all the deals. And I think I really lucked out because I found it before it arrived at the lot and was able to put a deposit down on it before everybody started calling in about them. Because right now, almost all of the dealers have no inventories on three quarter tons because they stopped making them to do a lot of other production. And now they're starting to ramp the production up, but there's so much back order that it's just taking forever to get inventory. And even with the, the ramp in production, there's other problems that they're having. So people are calling across the country to buy these things and um, it's just mayhem trying to get one. So I'm really happy that I was able to get something now rather than having to wait over a year because even the guy that uh, came to deliver the truck said his son purchased one of these uh, new as a factory order back in June and they just started building it now and they don't know when they're going to get it and apparently it's been rebranded to a 2021 truck so that's it's it's pretty tight but as you can see compared to my Tacoma when this thing is loaded um, there's almost no squat in the back with this load and you really don't even feel it pulling it behind it so that's really nice I definitely have a lot of headroom with this going from the Tacoma. I believe this truck puts me at about 15,000 pounds on the trailer, somewhere around there on a conventional tow, um, with a 10K, a little over 10K gross vehicle weight. So I get pretty close to 26,000 pounds for a CDL requirement.
And since it's over 10K gross vehicle weight rating, I have to apply for a DOT number since I'm using it in a business. So that's more fun for me. <laughs> so I guess we can take a look at the inside. It's pretty basic, nothing fancy. Just generic uh, cluster up here. It's got a little LCD panel in it. Your four-wheel drive controls, trailing controls, and nothing too fancy on the steering wheel. Just a regular center console area. Um, and with these trucks, uh, they all come with the fold-up seat and the center console storage, um, except for the higher-end models, which are you know 15 grand more than this truck. Those will come with actual center consoles, but this is pretty nice because I can always fold it up and have Mac up here with me or just have some more space for people. Uh, since I really don't use the center console all that much, I just put stuff in it, forget it's there, never open it again. Um, plus you get some storage on the top of the dash and two glove box compartments. Mac likes the truck. And in the back, this is a double cab, so uh, right now I just have the dog hammock in here on top. And then what's really nice is they design these uh, with full flat floors underneath so I can just put all of my tools down here and extra stuff and not have to worry about uh, the under seat storage like in the Tacoma and then leave this down for Mac to go on when I take trips. So I don't have to take stuff in and out, in and out. And then the bed of the truck, got some tools in it, but has the spray cover and I'll be getting the tonneau cover for it. And then I don't have the multi-gate, but this comes with the drop assist, which is pretty cool. You can open it from the truck and the keyless uh, fob. And I guess we'll just give it a little start for the fun of it. So my dad ended up getting the same kind of truck. He got a 3500 with the crew cab. And that's pretty much solely because of the reasons I was talking about before, was that nobody had inventory on these things and it's pretty scarce what you find. Um, originally he had a Tundra that he had just gotten a few years ago, but he was looking at these size trucks before, but ended up going back to the Tundra because he got a good deal on it. And he's been wanting a three quarter ton or bigger truck for a long time. And this was kind of a good point for him to jump into it, uh, especially since I got one, so he's got to get one. <laughs> but. His truck was just, um, I think one, he has one more convenience package than me or uh, trim than me. He has the SLE trim. So that gets him a couple more features on his dash, um, the accessory lights and, and things like that. But it's ultimately the same truck with a little bit extra leaf spring for payload, uh, same engine and everything like that. But since he has the crew cab, he has a lot bigger back seat, which makes it pretty hard for his turning radius uh, these things already have pretty bad turning radius, so. Uh, but he's really liking it, and it was awesome the other day when we did the, the pond job because it let us really pull those full wet trailer fulls with no problem. The Tundra would have had uh, a lot of sway in it when we were towing those, so. I'm hoping that both these trucks perform well and we don't have any problems going in the future. All right, so it's actually been a week since I talked about the truck. Uh, everything's still going well with it, um, but this past weekend, it ended up snowing and raining all weekend, so I didn't get out any other jobs. Uh, so, sort of took the weekend off, I guess. But what I wanted to do right now was prep the dump trailer for some rocks that I want to drop off. So at the last job where I was digging the pond, I mentioned that the guy wanted some rocks, and so we agreed on bringing him some rocks. And since I couldn't really get a good price um, off of like a phone call to any of the quarries for, you know, man-sized boulders, which are 50 to 100 pounds or can be moved by one guy. Uh, they kind of all do them in pallets or uh, by the ton at best, and then you have to go and look at them and everything. So they were ranging anywhere from $200 to $600 a ton, depending on what you were getting. So this trailer will take about three tons. Uh, and I just said I'd do it for 300 bucks, just drive it up to them. So the goal will be to take some from back here Max following me around. So my idea is just to take a bunch of the somewhat decent looking ones out of here and load them in the trailer because I just have so many extra back here that I really don't need. Um, and they'll work out great for around his pond holding the liner. What I wanted to do was put 
some plywood on the bottom of the dump trailer so I don't absolutely destroy it. And then here I have a couple pieces of old plywood my dad wasn't going to keep anymore. So I think what I'm going to do is take these, um, cut them down, and then just string them together and put them inside the dump trailer. And then hopefully tie them onto the D-ring so they don't come out with the rocks. Do this. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. And I guess it's been, I haven't really shown the lawn, but um, pretty much everything grew in. I did have some problems in a bunch of spots in the lawn where it got too wet overnight and then I had a rust fungus, so it kind of turned a lot of the lawn yellow on this side, but it's all bouncing back and looking pretty good for now. So happy with all that. Next year I'll overseed it and fill in all the little blank spots, so it'll be looking real good. But I guess before I do any of that, I was gonna up the pressure on my front end loader here. So I was checking the pressure the other day and it's around 1700, 1750. Uh, and I do have the couple shims from B Expanded when I ordered that kit like a year ago and just never got around to it. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, but since I've been squatting the machine so much with what it can lift already, I figured it might be kind of sketchy. Though, um, I think for doing these rocks and lifting into the dump trailer would be really helpful because it does basically hit the pressure limit when you're lifting a good bucket full when you're trying to get it all the way up. Uh, and that was happening when I was loading this trailer in the last job, so uh, it would definitely be useful. And the other thing I want to check is I've replaced this tire three times. Uh, and th this is a brand new tire. Basically, I shredded the sidewall on either side a few times with glass and rocks that were in my yard. And then I put a puncture through it, I believe right here I plugged it. Um, but the plug isn't leaking and I've checked the beads, I've checked the valve, I've checked the sidewalls and inspected the tread and I can't find where it's leaking, but it's like it loses about 5 PSI over a couple days and then by a week you're down, you know, below 20 PSI and you got to fill it up every job. So the first thing I have to do is sort of be able to get back here so I actually might be able to get to it without messing with the backhoe, but I may have to drop it back, I don't know. All right, so this kit gives me, I think, 0.4 millimeters, which they say equates to about 160 PSI. Oh, sorry, they give me, my bad, they give me two of each. So that would give me 0.8. Yeah, that would put me about, that would put me at about uh, 2,070, and I've seen people pushing it higher, so I mean, might as well, can't, uh, can't hurt. I don't even think there are any shims in this. It appears to be completely empty at the bottom. Now I just have to put it back into the, uh, the tractor. Of 
course, while I'm doing all that work, Mac is just eating plants. What are you doing, bud? You cleaning up for me? You cleaning up all these plants? You know, you have three toys here on the ground that I took out for you. Doofus. All right, so that's about 2100 PSI now um, from what it was at before, which was around 1750. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, it should add a couple hundred pounds of lift. Want some water, Mac? All right, well, it looks like I have some sort of bubbling going on here. Looks like it's on the tread. Yeah, you can see it right here. That must be it. Hmm. All right, well, there was actually two holes right beside one another, so I need two plugs. Uh, all right, let me go get some plugs. There's two holes. So I'm thinking I could have gotten these uh, along with the nail, these small holes when I was doing that uh, cleanup job where I demoed the shed, because I noticed there was a lot of nails and I tried to stay away from them, but probably some of them in the dirt anyways, so small little puncture holes from that. And then I got one full framing nail through the tire down here, so. Hopefully these will, you know, be the only holes that I reveal.
All right, so I took down a couple pieces of plywood here. Uh, that one's about a little over two feet wide. This one's four feet. The trailer's eight feet wide, and then I'm gonna have a little bit less because of the D-rings. And then it's 10 feet long. So these are eight foot sheets, of course. Um, so in order to cover the whole thing, I need a little bit extra. Uh, I may take an extra piece from inside, but I'm just gonna run these up, overlay them, screw them together, and then put some blocks up in the front with some uh, eyelets, and then uh, use a C connector or, um, or use a link to connect them to the D-ring so they don't slide out with the rocks. The reason I'm doing this is because I'll be dumping rocks in over from the side, um, and I really don't want to put too many major uh, dents or scratches or divots in it because I'm looking to upgrade to a bigger trailer, so I want to try and keep this one in decent condition until that point. Basically what I was planning was taking some of these uh, lag eyed lag bolts and using these spring snaps or tchotchkes or whatever you want to call them. Just using this to connect to the D-ring so that it holds it from falling out. All right, that should give it enough protection, I think, if I'm dumping them in the middle and then they just kind of roll to the side anyway. And with this lovely daylight savings, it is now dark out at 4 p.m., so I will be loading up rocks more than likely in the next few days and then bringing them over to his house then. Just had to do this preliminary setup. All right, so it's the next day. I just checked the tires. Went around and filled them up. This one seemed to hold its pressure. Didn't see any leaks on the plugs that I put in, tested them out. And I also went back around and filled them all up a bit more because the, um, the gauge that I had on my air compressor was reading incorrectly when I checked it against another gauge. So all the tires were sort of underfilled anyways. So that's probably why I was getting extra squat up here. Um, so now this one's filled up all the way. All the others are too. And it should be good to go with the extra pressure.
that. So that bucket right there, I'd say before I did this upgrade, it wouldn't lift it that fast. That was, that's insane. All right, so that loaded up real nice, real easy. Got some big rocks in there and uh, was really impressed with the PSI increase on the loader. I think that I got it pretty well balanced. Good a portion of the weight is over the two axles and then I have it kind of evenly placed on either side. Shouldn't have any issue with fish tailing and it's definitely a full load. So that's probably around two, two to three tons of rock in there um, and should do nicely for what he's looking for. So yeah, I was, I'm really impressed with the extra strength you get from just that small PSI increase. I mean, it can lift so much now that it is actually tipping the back with the backhoe on it um, just due to the sheer amount of extra weight it can get up to the, to the extra height. So. 
that's really good. The tires with the extra pressure looking a lot better, not, as, not squatting as much. Um, and I hope that this front left tire does not leak anymore. All right, so tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and deliver these rocks. Yeah, and you got a hand unloaded, that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so I got all the rocks dropped off and the trailer dumped them great. Didn't have any damage to the bottom of the trailer. Looks good. I'm really impressed with how the truck towed it. Didn't feel like anything was behind me. Awesome. So really happy with the truck, really happy with the delivery, and I will be back in a few weekends to help place these out with the liner.